All right, so today I want to take my very first clutch of ball python hatchlings and put them up in my hatchling rack. And if you've been watching my videos, you know I've been having a problem with my incubator. A fan went out and temperatures dropped down in the 60s. And I wasn't sure if any of these ball python or eggs were going to hatch. And I peeked in here a couple days ago and I got two snakes coming out of the eggs from my very first clutch. So I'm hoping that the rest of the eggs in the incubator will be okay. And, and I haven't looked in these egg boxes since then and there's like 11 eggs in here so I'm hoping we'll actually have more snakes that I can put up into my hatchling rack and I'm going to kind of show you the whole process that I go through essentially what I do is I'll, I'll tell first I'll look and see how many snakes are out and what the odds are and then we'll go through and probe them determine the males and the females and then I'll show you how I set up the tubs for the hatchlings and then I'll show you how I label each each individual tub. All right, so here are the two boxes, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just take a quick peek inside and see if these snakes are out of the eggs and see what our odds are. Wow, look at that, I can actually see through there. That looks like there's actually a lot of snakes in there. Let's take a look at what we have. Wow, look at that. <laughs> That's unbelievable. All of them hatched. That is amazing. I thought for sure these snakes were a goner. I can't even believe it. I'm going to throw these shells in the trash here. Oh, wow, I can't even believe it. And take a look at this. This is, this is my first bamboo hatchling. So essentially the pairing on this was a bamboo crossed with a 50% het caramel albino. So these will all be normal 50% het caramel albinos. Take a look at these beauties. <laughs> and let me tell you, at, at the reptile shows, the normals always sell the best. And I'm thinking, you know, these have some pretty decent size to them. You know, if these start eating some rodents, I'm thinking, you know, I have a, a reptile show in two weeks. If I can get a few rodents into these guys, maybe I'll have some of these for sale at the upcoming show, Reptilian Nation, June 8th and 9th, 2019. Hope to see you there. <laughs> that is awesome. I can't even believe that. So what I'm going to do is def I'm definitely going to go through these and set them up. Wow, that is fantastic. I thought for sure, I was looking in these eggs when my incubator went out and they were moldy and really, they smelled bad and they were really cold for a long time and I can't even believe that these snakes hatched out. It is a miracle, I can't even believe it. So let's take a look at this, oh, this is uh, interesting here, uh, we got... Looks like we got three out of the shells. We have two. That one's moving. This one looks like it's moving. So essentially, you know, what I want to do is the ones that are just kind of peeking out, I'm not going to touch those at all. I'm going to let those come out on their own and take a look at these wonderful bamboos. Wow, take a look at that. This is, it almost looks, I mean, these are so big, I can't believe it. These are all looking really good. Look at that, wow. <laughs> Some really good odds right there. Beautiful bamboos, take a look at that. That's amazing. And I don't see any problems with any deformities. It looks really good. All right, wow, I can't even believe. It looks like they all had, I thought for sure some of these were, were, you know, as a matter of fact, I got to one point where I was tempted just to throw them all out because they looked bad and they smelled bad. And I am glad I didn't throw these eggs out because look at my results, that is fantastic. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is rinse these babies off with warm water. And I'm gonna start with this big box of bamboos. <laughs> that is amazing. And what I did over here is I just made up a little bit of water that's 90 degrees just to kind of hydrate them a little bit. So essentially what happens when, the, when a snake first hatches from the egg, it uh, it hasn't shed yet and it really needs to shed so it's really good to hydrate them. And they do, typically don't eat until they're after their very first shed. So you really don't feed them. What you, what you just wanna do is you wanna just hydrate them a little bit, rinse all the vermiculite off. And I'm gonna 
get ready to probe them so I want them nice and clean and what I do is I just kind of splash it on a little bit I don't really soak them in the water and here's another one these are really good looking hatchlings I can't believe how big they are really good looking here's another one these are all just straight bamboos there's nothing else in here as far as another gene or anything so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these one by one and I'm going to figure out the males and the females. Alright, so before we probe any snakes, I actually wanted to show you the setup that I use for tubs for my hatchlings. And this is actually from my hatchling rack from ARS Caging. It has a built-in water dish, which is really handy. I use these little deli cups. And what I actually started using on these is, is last couple years I've been putting paper towels on the bottom and kind of getting them moist. But the problem is with the paper towel is it tends to mold. And I've had a lot of, especially if you're using paper towels, keeping them wet a lot, what you'll see is like red and green and all these different colors like yellow, different colors of mold that gets all through your paper towels. And I don't really think it's good for the snakes to, to be you know, on paper towels, especially if they're wet as, as far as the mold is concerned. So what I'm going to try this year is I'm going to try some coconut husk chip and I'm using Pro Cocoa this time and I happen to have some right here and this is what it looks like and essentially what I do is I just kind of put it up in the corner here like this and I always keep a, a spot in the hot spot uh, open so they can have direct access to the hot spot here. And if you put too much, I find that it, it tends to go in the water. So you want <clears throat> just, just a little bit around, just kind of keep it a little bit lower so it doesn't get in the water. And then keep a nice spot on the hot spot open back here. So that is essentially my setup. And then I put some water in the dish. And then uh, I'll put this in the rack so after we probe them I'll actually have a place to put the snake when we're done. Alright so here is the probe kit that I use to determine the males and the females. It's really the best way to do it. I was actually talking to a veterinarian and and she said that you should never pop the hemipenes because it can actually damage the snake. She said you should always use a probe if possible. And essentially what I do is I take the smallest probe put it in the pocket of the tail of the snake and if it goes in really deep then it's a male. If it goes in just a little bit then it's a female and I have to warn you if you're probing snakes right from the egg typically it's not hundred percent accurate what you want to do is you want to wait till they get a little bit more age on them you know maybe a month or two right before you sell them and then probe them again to make sure you have the right gender and essentially what I use is a lubricating jelly you could use any kind of a water-based lubricant on your snakes and this can be extremely frustrating depending on how the snake behaves sometimes they can get a little bit crazy and it's sometimes it's really difficult to, to probe the snake and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with one of my just randomly one of my bamboo ball pythons I want to hydrate them a little bit uh, get the vermiculite off of them and then I'm gonna try to probe in the tail and this is kind of sometimes sometimes I can do it right away and sometimes it takes a little while essentially the, I found the best way to do it is to put kind of your fingers right here like this and that's going in just a little bit this is definitely a female Females are always nice, always in high demand. Look at that snake, how beautiful. That is awesome. All right, so here's my label maker that I use to make the labels for my hatchlings. And this is pretty much what I do. I, I have, you know, female bamboo, 50% head caramel albino, and it's 19 for 2019. C01 is clutch one and F for female. That is the label I use. And what I do is actually use these magnetic strips, and it actually comes 
in a roll and actually I'm out of I'm out of the roll and what I'm gonna do on these is I'm just gonna look for some that I can actually reuse from last year I don't want to reuse this one because you know, once they eat six rodents I put this on the the tub to, to know that it is ready to sell I usually don't sell until they eat six rodents but I'm gonna go ahead and find one here and put it on let's see so essentially it has to be the the right size and then what I do you know I just peel off the old label and then I put on the new label all right so here is my very first ball python hatchling from 2019 and this is the label so it's essentially just a magnetic label and it goes right on these Aris racks these are magnetic racks really heavy duty racks and this is what it looks like with the snake he is all snuggled up perfect pretty exciting first snake in the rack all right so here is hatchling number two my second bamboo take a look at this beauty this one's pretty got some pretty interesting patterns on it and I'm gonna determine if this is a male or a female. So I wiped off my probe. I put some new uh, lubricating jelly on it and I'm gonna try this and see if it's a male or a female. And usually it's best to do it before the snake really starts taking off. If the, if the snake really starts, you know, fleeing and jumping around, it's really hard. So that one's going pretty far. I would say this is a male. And when you're doing this, you have to be really kind of, really kind of gentle so you don't hurt the snake. And you kind of have to go in and out a little bit. Yeah, I would say this one is a male. And you notice on this one, it has a little bit of a swollen belly right in here. That's no problem at all. You know, I've, I've actually seen them really kind of swollen right in here, and they always seem to pull through. It's just kind of the egg yolk that still has to absorb in here. So if you have any swelling up in there, it's no problem at all. Take a look at that beautiful snake. What a beauty. All right, so here's my third hatchling. It is a little bit smaller than the last two, but still a really good weight. It, it's, you know, I've actually seen some that are born, you know, about half the size, and that's not really healthy. It's almost like a genetic defect, but in this case, I say this is perfectly normal for a hatchling ball python. And let's see if this one is male or female. If we can get a handle on this guy here. Sometimes they can be really tricky. This one. Going in just a little bit, this is definitely a female. All right, here is my fourth bamboo from that box. Look at that beauty, that is incredible. These are really high contrast bamboos, it's pretty awesome. And I actually just rinse this guy off and put new gel on my probe. Let's see if we can figure out if this is a male or a female. And sometimes you just kind of have to ball them up a little bit and hide their head to get them to kind of calm down a little. This, this is kind of a, this guy's wanting to really take off. Let's see if I can do it here. <laughs> you really got to get them in the right mood to, to really probe them. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's a little difficult. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, this one. That one looks like a female too. Wow, really hitting the odds on the females. And when you're talking about odds for ball pythons, most people say, you know, what are the odds of getting the certain morph you want? But there's also the odds of hitting the males or the females. And I would say probably most people are interested in the females. Every now and then, you know, the, the males of a certain gene will kind of, you know, be in higher demand than the females. But it really depends on what the market value is. You know, these bamboos, it seems like everyone is really going for the females lately so it's really cool that I'm getting a lot of females 
So what I put on these egg boxes is press and seal, and this is essentially what I use, is a glad press and seal, and it keeps the humidity in, but still allows it to breathe. You don't have to put any holes in the egg box at all. It's perfectly fine with just the press and seal. And I want to just put these guys in there for a few more days until they come out on their own. All right, so I'm starting on my second box. This is all the same clutch. I just separated it in two boxes because there wasn't really enough room for that many eggs. And I just washed this guy off. And take a look at this guy. He is a lot darker, it seems like, than the other bamboos, which is kind of interesting. He's got a little stripe down his tail, which is pretty neat. Definitely slightly different, and these bamboos are really, uh, I'd say, polymorphic, which means they, there's a lot of variability between the different, you know, they're all bamboos, but there's a lot of difference in the patterns and the, the shades of, you know, the intensity as you go from one snake to another. As a matter of fact, last year I kind of pulled them all out and I did a video on the different polymorphism of bamboo ball pythons. This one is really interesting. It's completely different than all the other ones. It's really quite unique. And let's see if this one is a male or a female. See if he will let me probe him or her. See if I can get this. Mm, maybe, maybe not. All right, buddy. Well, let's see here. <laughs> All right, this guy's being a little bit stubborn. And sometimes when they really take off, it's almost impossible. You just have to let them run for a while. And sometimes if you just kind of hold them and hide their head, that works pretty good too. Uh, let's see. He is really tense. That one way in there, this is definitely a male. It's an interesting looking snake. I've never seen one. I've had a, I had a dark one last year, but he wasn't quite like this. This is a really unique bamboo. All right, so it looks like we have four normal ball pythons in this box, or classics, as they call them in the UK. These are 50% het caramel albino, and really there's no markers for het caramel albino that I know of. They, you pretty much can't tell if it's caramel albino, uh, het for caramel albino or not. And het just means it has one copy of the caramel albino gene. You actually need two for a visual to actually see a visual caramel albino. So what I want to do is I'm going to probe this guy and see if it's a male or a female. Let's see if I can get him in the right position here. Which is always the tricky part. This one, I would say, is a female. Definitely looks like a female. Yeah, this is definitely a female. This one's got a little bit swollen belly too. That is definitely from the yolk right in here, no problem at all. That's a good looking snake. Normals, <laughs> the normals always sell the first, they, they sell the fastest. Anyone looking for a pet snake, you know, they're always, you know, and usually if it's 50% head caramel albino, it sells pretty much the same price as just a normal. This one seems really dark too. Has some interesting spots all down the middle. It's really, really a neat looking snake. All right, so I have a small dilemma. I actually ran out of the tape that you use for the, for the label maker and I want to start using 
using. Uh, I actually have this really big label maker tape that I've never really used. I actually got it with the label maker. What I'm going to do is just going to do this temporarily until I can order some more and make some new labels. But I just thought it was interesting that I ran out of the small labels. All right, so here's another one. This is a normal 50% head caramel albino, and I'm starting to think maybe I'll bring these to the to the next reptile show, the Denver Repticon, and it'll be interesting to see if I can actually get these to eat, and if they don't eat, I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is I'll just kind of label them if they haven't eaten or only eaten once. Essentially, they need live mouse hoppers for the very first meals. So if you're thinking about buying one of these, you really need a source of live mice in order to feed them for their very first few meals. Once they eat six times, it's perfectly fine. And they'll eat just about anything after that. And let's see, <laughs> this guy's crawling away. Let's see if I can figure out if this is a male or a female. If he'll cooperate. This one is being really stubborn. You can see it just goes in just a little bit and it stops. This is definitely a female. Female normals are always the best ones to have. Alright, so here is another normal 50% hit caramel albino and this one seems pretty much just as dark as the other ones. They're all really, it seems like they're all really dark and sometimes the normals can really vary and these all seem to have the spots all along the back and they're really dark it's it's really interesting that they're coming out pretty much pretty much the same as far as you know the normal sometimes the normals can be really variable and sometimes the bamboos can be really variable it really depends on you know what's going on with the clutch and this guy's really taking off boy I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes when they get really wild and crazy like that, it is really hard to to to, to probe them. Let's see if we can actually do this here. Mm. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> I think this guy's a little bit ticklish. <laughs> I think that's what's going on here. He's just ticklish all the way around. There we go. The trick is just to get him at a good angle. See if I can get this guy probed. This one seems like... This one seems like a female as well. Just goes in just a little bit. Another female. Keep in mind that <laughs> some of these could be wrong. You know, the first time you probe a hatchling, sometimes it doesn't always work the first time. I'm definitely going to go back and try to reprobe these right before the show. Okay, so I just rinsed this guy off. Take a look at this one. This one is a little bit different. This is. Look at the, I don't know if you can catch this on camera, but if you look on the sides, it has this kind of orange coming up from the sides, which is kind of interesting. I didn't really notice that much orange on the other ones. And then this one seems like it almost has more kind of tracks down the sides of the belly instead of, you know, speckles all along on top of the belly. So I'm thinking, you know, if I was a betting man, I'd say this one, it might be the het caramel albino, but you know, you really don't know for sure. And I'm just really taking a wild guess, looking for something a little bit different, kind of pulling at strings. You never know, but I would say this one might be het for caramel albino. And I want to figure out if this is a male or a female. Let's take a look. This one, this one is a really big snake. I can't even believe how big it is. I think it's definitely the biggest one in the whole clutch. Looks like he's had a few rodents, but this one hasn't eaten at all. Just fresh out of the egg. Let's see if we can get a gender on this guy. <laughs> I must need to like like hold the head in my hand <laughs> so he doesn't crawl away, and then hold it 
kind of like this. <laughs> I haven't quite figured out the right way to hold them. And sometimes if they're just kind of taken off, it's really almost impossible. I think it's easier to actually pop. Oh, this one. Well, I think this one might be a female. Let's see. Ugh. Boy, this guy's hard. I think this one's a female too. And I, you know, I, th I think that, I'm, I'm always thinking that for these brand new hatchlings that the smallest probe might even be too big because the, the, it can actually trick you if you have a snake that's too small and you use a probe that's too big, it doesn't go in all the way just because the probe isn't small enough to go in that pocket. And I would say it's, it'd probably work for a snake this big, but for some of the smaller ones, I would say it's probably, um, you know, it could possibly be that. That may be the reason that I was getting some false, you know, females last year. I was calling them females and actually they turned out to be males. And this one definitely seems to be another female. Nice big female. And I think this is, I th if I was betting man, I'd say it's Het Carmel Albino. And I, if someone's looking for one, for sure, Het Carmel Albino, I'll probably point him in the direction of this one. But still, it's you know it's pretty much the same as the other one. Really dark with uh, pretty much repeating spots right on the back. They're really awesome. This one kind of has a little, little of different of kind of like lines here instead of spots all the way down. But it, these are really good looking normals. All right, so my hatchling rack is finally filling up. These are the first hatchlings of the year. I have nine right here and two more in the incubator. And let's see, we actually have five bamboos, which is pretty fantastic. Five bamboos to sell at the shows this year. All right, so I can't believe that those eggs actually hatched out. I thought for sure I was gonna lose most of that clutch. And take a look at this bamboo. This is what it's all about right here, getting new baby snakes. And these will definitely be for sale at the shows. I'm probably gonna hold back maybe one uh, of the male caramel albinos, hoping to breed it back to the female, 100% head caramel albinos, to try to hit the car caramel albino bamboo and I don't think I've ever seen a caramel albino bamboo could be a world's first which would be pretty awesome so that's it thanks for watching and I will see you next time